And now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's time we march forward to our next keynote for the day. And for the same, I'd like to invite on stage Mr. Nishant Rana, Senior Solutions Sales at Thales Group, for his keynote address on a very crucial subject that is ensuring trust in the digital economy. That is how the Thales approach is to protecting applications, data, and identities. So can we have a round of applause and let's welcome on stage Mr. Nishant Rana. Uh, we have talked a lot about uh, digital economy, we have talked a lot about digital transformation that I think since morning we have been discussing and we are hearing a lot of you know industry leaders talking about that thing. But what's Thales take in it and how we can actually help customers and the organization protect uh, applications, data and identity, that's what uh, we are here for. But before we start, uh, for the people who don't know about Thales, we are a part of a bigger group, which is uh, the largest defense contractor in Europe and third largest in the world. We are actually, uh, we have different business units. Part of it is digital identity and security. That's where I am representing. And then we have a bigger Thales group, which talks about and deals in de uh, defense and security, which deals about the space and aeronautics and airplanes and the in-flight entertainment and so on and so forth, right? And by the way, we are market leaders in all sort of these business things, but specifically from the CPL side, which is cloud protection and licensing, just to quote some numbers, we have around 3,000 uh, financial institutions which actually use the product of ours to you know, protect the background or protect the value that is trans, you know, uh, sent across the banks. To put it onto the numbers, we have around 80% of the volume, the world's volume of which originates from a post transaction. Every time you tap in a card or every time you, you know, put in your uh, ATM pin, the values or your uh, credit card number is always or a debit card number is always encrypted and sent across uh, to the issuing site to validate whether you are a genuine user or not. So that complete transaction, 80% of the world is secured using our products. The top 10 banks of the world, all the top 10 banks in the world use the product which you might be familiar with. It's called HSMs, Hardware Security Module. But that's uh, not just we are here for. The agenda for today is very simple. We have talked about digital transformation. We have talked about the challenges also, but we'll talk about a very unique approach of single vendor unified platform, which can help organizations like you to tackle all these challenges and help you in your digital transformation. I won't put much effort on, uh, you know, talking about what innovation brings, but uh, on a very quick note, there's uh, hyper-personalized uh, digital experience, what customer want. They are uh, advocating for open bank transparency. There's a lot of new banks that are coming up which have opened uh, and digitified the banking and fintech market. And because of the COVID that have happened, a lot of the banks have actually moved from on-premise data to cloud or hybrid environment. So this is actually what driving the innovation and the transformation. And to put it to the numbers, 90% or 91% rather of the banks, they have moved or they have some form of you know, presence in the cloud. And out of these numbers, 62% of the banks are also investing in the new technology for fraud detection like blockchain. Specifically for India perspective, you might be aware about the uh, the product or, or the, uh, the, the technology which is CBDC, which is again backed up by a uh, blockchain technology, which uh, will be launched very soon in a full-fledged environment. And then a lot of, uh, you know, banks are also investing in AI technology. That could be a prompt GPT, a chat GPT, uh, you know, and the prompt responsing. And that's where they are actually training their bots or training their customer environment, which also deals with a lot of data. And because uh, all these technologies require some form of you know, investment in the analytics tool and to bring the actual value out of the data, right? Uh, a lot of these banks are also investing in big data technologies. They are creating big data lakes, they are creating uh, super apps which have a lot of data and then they bring out the relevant 
content which can help them you know uh, make the product more efficient but the the problem is the digital transformation is actually imperative to use uh, sensitive information now sensitive information could be your banking details could be your PII data and anything else that associates your identity uh, with your uh, physical identity with your virtual identity in, in, a, in a banking environment this actually uh, translates to a number that 97 percent of the banks or the fintech institutions are actually using some form of digital transformation uh, uh, technology it could be cloud big data IOT and out of those 97 percent all of the 97 percent are using some form of sensitive data to uh, create a digital uh, transformative environment <coughs> so as a result of this a lot of data that is moving out to the cloud there's a lot of identities that have moved out to the cloud and now they are, we have seen a lot of applications that are moving to the cloud. And we need to protect these data, this identity and the applications. But not just this part, there's a bigger challenge to it, the data breaches. And if we quote the numbers uh, which we will do, the number one threat is an insider attack and the ransomware attack that we have seen in the market. A lot of fintech institutions are being attacked by ransomware uh, kind of or a random you know or ransom malware attacks and on top of it there's a lot of uh, compliance that is coming from all these uh, uh, different verticals it could be RBI that we are talking about there's a UIDI compliance SEBI compliance that have uh, recently come up and the global compliances for PCI 4.0 and the GDPR compliances as well so this actually adds to a lot of problem uh, and brings a disruption to the you know digital transformation along with it a lot of data that has been captured on cloud or on premise they the customers and the entities do not have a visibility of the type of data what data is it and what where is it being stored so the visibility of the data is very critical which i think uh, is one of the major challenges or could be a road blocker also and what end up happening is that the organizations end up creating data silos they have some solution tackling to one use case uh, for for their on premise environment they can have a different solution tackling a different uh, use case in a cloud environment so they always end up creating a silos which uh, again is is a major hurdle in the growth scenario so to put that in number 37 percent of the organizations have been breached uh, last year and uh, 65 percent of the breaches that have happened have happened because there's a human error involved in uh, um, api misconfiguration or some misconfiguration at a cloud level and only 20 percent of the actual data from the 60 percent that is onto the cloud is encrypted <laughs> so that is the real uh, problem uh, and that actually lead to a lot of uh, you know cyber attacks and we have we have talked uh, briefly about uh, the financial uh, you know requirements but if you see all these requirements of RBI R IRDBT uh, cyber security framework and SEBI and PCI requirements they always point to some key terms about data encryption and tokenizing the data accessing uh, restricting the access to those particular data and to have a strong you know key management control to have a very effective key lifecycle management in place for wherever you are putting the data and wherever you are encrypting the data and a very interesting fact that you might have seen in the news that uh, a lot of vendors are doing a security platform and tool consolidation we at Thales was a you know uh, were the market leaders in data security and last year we acquired a company called Imperva to provide a app sec security as well so this uh, you know consolidation uh, trend is something we have seen recently where Apollo Alto have acquired the major chunk of the IBM's uh, uh, data security uh, product similarly IBM is moving out of uh, the cybersecurity part to acquiring HashiCorp uh, 
which is again a secrets management. So this consolidation is something that we will see in the future because the customers are demanding uh, that they do not want to have different products and different vendors to deal with. They want one single trusted vendor to provide a platform kind of approach uh, to uh, their problems. So that's where our product, the combined product of Thales and Emparva, we help customers protect what matters the most to them, depending on the applications they are using, depending on the data they are consuming, and the identity level. So we have different products around it. It could be a WAF, it could be a DDoS attack, or it could be a plain uh, data at rest encryption. <clears throat> and this is what customers are demanding. And this is what we provide, a unified approach to data application and identity security, which can actually help customer understand the data and the way they are accessing the data, they can restrict it to a authorized user or authorized level and then de-risking the data by various application tools, by various classifications and protection um, you know, uh, solutions that we have in a combined synergy and at, at rest, uh, protecting the data wherever that is being consumed, whether if it's uh, being consumed uh, in memory or whether it's being stored at a data at rest, or we have all the solutions in a combined synergy to protect the life cycle of the data. I think that was a very brief overview about the product. If the customers or any of you want to really understand how we are delivering it, we have a booth outside. And that's uh, pretty much it from my side. Thank you very much.